Answerly viewers, welcome to my first comment video. It's a new thing that we're adding into our book review process um, where I go back through the videos and I respond to your comments. So I'm going to be reading the comments over here on my computer and then responding directly to you, my thoughts about what you thought. So the first one is from Anna in Wonderland. There's a lot of stuff here, but the thing that I wanted to bring up was that she said, I didn't like how the chapter started with those really pretentious quotes, though. Oh my god, I've been meaning to bring this up and I kept forgetting in each of my uh, videos while I was actually reading, but those quotes were the worst. I really love this book. I have very few negative things to say about this book, but I, first of all, just really don't like when chapters in books in general start with quotes, unless they're really good or pertaining to the story in any way, but I felt like those quotes did not add anything to the story. They annoyed me, they were in a stupid font, and sometimes I had to just like sit there and read them a couple times to figure out what it was even trying to tell me about the chapter. I hated them. I honestly just started to ignore them. I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Alright, the next comment that I would like to discuss is from Emily Hornberg. She brought up a really good point that even though she can see why Tana and Gabriel sort of like each other, that uh, she didn't think if her friends had all been slaughtered by a bunch of vampires, she'd run into the arms of one immediately afterward. Um, and yeah, I thought that a little bit. I think that's kind of a strange reaction for Tana to have, but I think that it's such a traumatic experience, like such a hugely overwhelming traumatic experience, to lose like all of your friends in one fell swoop if one of the vampires feels like, you know, if the enemy of my enemy is my friend sort of situation. I understand why she helps him, because she thinks maybe he'll help her or something, and I think that she's not even really thinking. She's just sort of like, her instincts have taken over and she's just doing what feels like the right thing to do, and maybe it is her way of dealing with it, like you said. Maybe when everyone you know and love is gone, what do you do? If you can't beat them, join them sort of situation? I don't know. I think it's one of those things where she probably has no idea what to think or feel, and Gabrielle's nice to her, and maybe it helps her grapple with the fact that, you know, also don't forget that there's a part of her that thinks that she might be infected, and so it's this life that she's very quickly had to come to terms with possibly being her future, and so I think sort of all bets are off and everything that she's ever known is out the window. And like you said, kiss hot vampire instead of thinking. Maybe. Emma Brandt is someone who religiously comments on every single one of these videos, so thank you for being so invested in what we're doing here. She brought up a really good point about Tana being really badass, but also being kind of violent. There's definitely a lot of issues out there in the world as people are coming around to making these strong female characters and how sometimes strong can sort of be synonymous with male-like, you know, like to be a strong woman you have to be able to bench press a house and karate chop a table and lift a car and be able to take down and viciously murder really old vampires. And yeah, that's definitely something that I think that everyone should keep in mind when they're considering who their favorite female characters are and which female characters are really not just strong but really well written and developed because I think the mark of a strong female character is someone who feels like they could be real. You know what I mean? Because so many female characters in literature and on TV and in movies are just lacking in so many fundamental aspects of personhood. You know, they just are whiny or they just are the girlfriend or, you know, they have these like very small personalities because they're there to serve a purpose, and that's just not what it means to be a human. And so I'm, I'm very happy to see uh, that you guys are people who pick up on that kind of stuff. And I, I don't think Tana necessarily 100% falls into that category. I think she definitely made mistakes and had a big heart, and she was compassionate, and she had a lot of really good things that I thought made her pretty, pretty well developed main character. But I do agree that she, I, like I said in a previous video, I think that she was a little bit larger than life and I don't really know where that came from. I don't know if it was something that was sort of buried deep down that was unlocked uh, from what happened with her and her mother or what. I would have liked a little bit more explanation um, as to like how Tana's instincts knew to do these things. I feel like maybe she was just inherently kind of awesome, which isn't maybe the best explanation, but she was okay. I give her like a, I give her like a seven or eight. For, for female heroines. Fred of Mars wrote a really interesting comment about how even though this novel is a standalone 
book, it's not part of a series, and as far as I know, there's no sequels planned or anything, but I feel like it's a book that actually really could warrant um, really interesting sequels. As Fred of Mars said, another book with completely different characters but set in the same world might be really awesome, and I would definitely be down to read something like that. I think that there's a lot of different cold towns out there that might be interesting to read about, or just other, other life you know, maybe people who don't ever go in the cold town and just hear about it from the outside, or maybe people who help regulate the cold towns. Um, you know, maybe a book from the point of view of someone who works in the government or like in, you know, the larger social media space in this world. I think there's a lot of different angles in this world that could be really interesting to tell a story from. And so, fingers crossed that something like that happens, but if not, it's always fan fiction. I seem to have not copied down this comment, so I don't remember who said it, but someone brought up the fact that many of the supporting characters were not very well developed. And this made me really happy that I have you guys uh, for the book reading process, because it's not really something that I thought about too much. Um, I was so wrapped up in how crazy everything was that I didn't stop to think that there are a lot of characters that I would have liked to know a lot more about. We didn't really find out a lot more about Valentina or Jameson, and they're so interesting. Like, what the heck is Jameson's story? We still don't even know. And Winter died really early, and I think that more about him would have been really cool. Midnight just died, and a lot of people that I found really interesting just died, and I would have loved maybe another chapter from Pearl's point of view. Uh, like, before she went to the Cold Town, or after even. I really hate when books do that when they, they give you these really interesting supporting characters and they don't actually give them the time that they deserve to become an even more integral part of the story. They're just sort of cardboard cutouts of people that are there to help further the plot of the main character. And this really doesn't ruin the story for me in any way. It just leaves me with a lot of questions and wishing that we knew more about these characters. And lastly, Simone loves you. I just wanted to say that I'm very happy that there was a bunch of you that also didn't think that you'd ever read a, a book like this um, and that you ended up enjoying it. Uh, you even said you'd normally not pick it up. You thought it was fantastic and I think that that's wonderful because I'm still just amazed at how much I enjoyed this book. When I first realized it was going to be about vampires, I sort of was like, oh crap. What did I get myself and my viewers into? But I am just so amazed and I've, I've sort of done a little bit of reading online and this book like overwhelmingly got really really fantastic reviews so thank you guys for reading this with me so that was my comment video for the coldest girl in cold town if you want to be featured in one of these videos in the future make sure to leave your thoughts and questions and musings and ideas about the future books that we're reading as a reminder the book that we'll be reading next is beauty queens by Libba bray i don't really know much about it but it looks like a lot of fun and we're about to get elbow deep in it as we start reading really soon so make sure you pick up a copy of that book so that you're ready when we begin. Thank you guys for watching and I'll be back next week with my actual official review of The Coldest Girl in Cold Town and then we'll be done. <laughs>